again, Brad Winner. Take this one off. <laughs> How are you all today? I'm seeing since last week so many more great, great sourdough loaves being baked. Thanks for sharing on our group. Uh, it's always so exciting to see these pictures and how well you're doing and love to answer your questions, all that. And have something else fun coming up. We're going to do a sourdough, name your sourdough contest. So you've had your sourdoughs and so many of you had such creative names for them. We're going to have a little contest and choose uh, the most creative. So. We're going to make a post in the breadwinners group. And to enter, your co enter the contents, you comment with a photo or video of yourself with your starter and its name. The more creative and the funnier, the better. We're going to pick a round of finalists on Sunday afternoon. And then Monday, we'll open up the, the uh, voting on Instagram and you all will help us choose the grand prize winner. So each finalist will get a copy of my book right on the table, and the grand prize winner will get a $150 gift certificate to Easy Tiger. All right, so that's really fun. The name of our starter, I always call it my Waller Creek starter, because we started on the beautiful banks of Waller Creek downtown on 6th Street. Uh, yeah, back in 2011 when we got this whole thing going. So yeah, this, our original starter was started right there at 6th Street in the bakery. So, so um, we're going to be talking about scoring your loaves after it's kind of the last step before you put it in the oven. Um, and scoring is very important. When your bread hits the heat of the oven, and there's some moisture in that oven, whether it's trapped inside your Dutch oven or you've added some steam to your oven, that loaf is going to expand quite a bit. All those gases, all the carbon dioxide that's built up and is held in that gluten structure expands with the heat. And your loaf expands in the oven. You can see some pretty cool uh, slow motion or, or time lapse uh, pictures of breads blooming in the oven on Instagram, I've seen them, and, and wherever you watch this kind of video, sure, many of y'all have seen them. Um, but that last, we call it oven spring, that last blooming of the loaf in the oven is just fantastic, it's spectacular. Well, proper scoring helps control that. If you don't score your bread and you don't have enough moisture in there, what's gonna happen is it'll find a weak spot that is gonna blast out there. And sometimes your loaves will get twisted. I probably should have done one without scoring just to show you. But um, So I did all these earlier. Uh, and I'm going to show you each of these scores. So uh, the scoring is, it, of course, it's beautiful, it's decorative, but it's also functional. And you can see how like all these loaves are loaves of our sourdough. Of course, these are long. These were in a long proofing basket. But all these were in the same proofing basket. They all weigh the same. But you can see how those different scores kind of can influence the shape and whatnot. Um, so let's get started. So we do, well, let's talk about how we, what we use to score it, too. This is the thing that we use most commonly in the bakery. It's called a lam in French. Uh, it looks like lame, but it's not lame. It's very useful. Um, <laughs> it's called a lam in French. Uh, and it used to be that they would just sharpen these lam very sharp, and that would cut it. But these days, bakers always just take a double-edged double -edged razor blade. And you see how it has a nice little curve to it? And that helps us with some, especially some of these scores. Um, if you don't have the lawn, and of course there are a bunch of fancy ones these days you can buy, and some really pretty ones, uh, but this one's just a very basic, like we use here in the bakery. I also have a, just a single edge razor blade. That works really well as well. I know some of you think you have really sharp knives at home, and I'm sure you do. I'm sure they're really sharp for all the things that you do with knives. But a regular bladed knife, it's really hard to get that sharp as a razor and sharp enough to score bread. 
So if you don't have a razor blade or a lump, I recommend using a serrated knife to score. And I have this fancy one. It's called the Maker's Knife. It has a little curve to it, but it's serrated as well. I use this sometimes. But right now I'm going to use the lump. Okay? So the typical how we score our breads typically is with uh, the sourdough rounds. The sourdough bowl is with this diamond shape. That's another thing we do here at the bakery is that we score the loaves the same every day so that it's a, another way to identify which bread is which. So our sourdough, we always start and just cut like that. Nice. And the other thing is, is the quicker you can do it, the, uh, the, the nicer cuts you're going to get. And then, so the other thing I did was, notice how I don't just plow straight through? I kind of follow the loaf up a little bit and have, try to have the same depth all the way across. Like that, and like that. And that's going to turn into this cut. Now our other sourdough here um, is the or Pano Le Mans. It's the French country sourdough. It has a little bit of whole spelt and some rye in it. Um, and the feed on the sour is a little bit different. Um, and we typically score that when it's this nice box cut. So two like that and then crossing over like that. Oops, I don't want to cut myself on TV. There we go. And notice too here how um, I'm covering the whole loaf. I don't want it just a little box in the middle or too far out. I'm just like kind of centering it there and covering the whole loaf as evenly as I can. And that cut comes out like this. Now, if you want to get a nice ear on your loaf like this, you can score it with just a single score. And then you have your, with these I had my lamb straight up and down so that the blade was cutting straight into it. Here I'm going to put it at a little bit of an angle like this. So it's straight up, I'm going to put it at a, like a 45 degree angle to the surface. And then I'm just going to do a moon shape like this. And that's going to pop up and give this nice little ear here. But see how it also kind of, it's not complete. This started out as round as these did, but the nature of this cut kind of tucks it in a little bit there, but it opens up nicely like that. So just to show you that same cut. On a long loaf, you do the same thing. So you're going to go from end to end, and again with that, 45 degree angle. So not straight up and down, but about 45 degrees. And one nice long cut like that. And that should open up beautifully like this and give you that nice little ear there too. It's a pretty cut. All right. I did one where I did the box cut again. Again, straight up and down on that side, that side, and that side, and that side. So they cross over. And then I just did a little X in the middle. That's a pretty well I've seen um, quite a few of you doing this cut on your loads, and I really like it. So I did this. That's all you do. Again, I'm trying to keep the depth even, so I follow the curve of the load over like this. I can go just a little bit so that I'm not like digging like yeah it stays even like that. Yeah. Beth Zeitzman asks, how deep are your cuts? Uh it depends a little bit on the proof of your loaf, but in general it's not very deep. It's maybe an eighth of an inch or so, maybe a quarter of an inch deep. Um, if your loaf is a little underproofed, you want to cut a little deeper. 
and if your loaf, if it starts to collapse too much, if it's like really overproofed, uh, then you want to make shallower cuts. But in general, it's just, a, it's not too deep, um, maybe a yeah, quarter inch or so. so. These are expanding already. Let's see if we can see that better on this one. So I'm just going to do a cross on this one, like this. Yeah, I'm going maybe a quarter of an inch at the most. And then like that. Uh, Kat, uh, Caddy says, uh, where do you get the tools from? The tools? The tools. The lawn? Yes. Yeah, you can buy these on the internet. Um, just, uh, I don't have a specific source. Actually, there's a, the San Francisco Baking Institute, SFBI, San Francisco Basic Baking Institute. They sell smallwares to bakers, um, and their sort of one-time sister company uh, is a, a wholesale bakery equipment seller, and we get a lot of our smallwares from them. We get the baskets and, and the lum and stuff from them. Um, also, like I bought this at Websterant.com. But they're all over. You just uh, Google lawn and you'll find it. Okay. we got one more cut on a long loaf here. So this is the cut that you would do if you're doing a batard or a baguette. So again, it's not straight up, straight up and down. It's at about a 45 degree angle. And it's not across the loaf look at it when it comes out it kind of looks like it travels across but you don't want to the mistake a lot of people make is they cut it across the loaf and that doesn't open up in this nice way instead it's mostly down the loaf down the center it's off at an angle a little bit like that but you see I and then I have my 45 degree angle here then I want to come about a third of the way back on this cut that I just made and start my next one there and again at a little bit of an angle but not across and then a third cut again about a third of the way into this cut and then down to the end and that's what opens up into these beautiful cuts and obviously if you had a longer baguette you could do it. our baguette is 24 inches we do seven cuts on ours you could do five you could do six you could do seven whatever you feel like. You can just do three if you want, but um, that's typically what we do is seven cuts on our baguette. And then I have one last bowl. And another thing you can definitely see on the internet are all kinds of really fun, fancy scoring, very decorative scoring techniques. Um, our bread, for whatever reason, doesn't always come out that great. It tends to maybe burst a little bit too much, but I did these little cuts on there. I still think this one's pretty, but, um, you know, trying to, the way we proof our bread at just at room temperature and the strength of our starter, we tend to get, uh, so it really bursts, and it's harder to do those really intricate, beautiful cuts on ours. Um, but I love seeing those. Uh, but what you do with that, to get those nice little, um, kind of like wheat stock look and just do a really shallow cut straight like that and then do little tiny shallow cuts like this no angle to it just straight it up and down and pretty shallow cuts just like that and do another one over here just to refer to it Uh, Wynn wants to know, my scores disappear with my high hydration loaves. What can I do to help? Hmm. Um, boy. <laughs> uh, it's not so much the hydration as maybe the proofing. Um, try proofing just a tiny bit less maybe. Or uh, maybe make your scores a tiny bit deeper. And it also depends on what scoring shape you're doing. Um, if you're scoring like at this 45 degree angle like I did on this one and this, you're going to get more of that lip opening, so it'll probably uh, show up 
better in the end. But even with a high hydration dough, if your proof is correct, you should be getting uh, a great spring to your bread. So you might want to just check in, check in on your proof and maybe it's gone a little bit far, further than it should have. Awesome. So that's scoring. And these are all the same dough, just different scores. Yeah, this is all our regular sourdough, our Austin sourdough. Uh, it's made with our starter, the same starter that we're uh, distributing through our drive through and delivery. It's exactly the same starter, fed the same way. Um, of course, we feed it in a big, big bowl like this. <laughs> This is the flour, I'm not sure if this is for a starter or, but we mix this big of a batch. <laughs> 250 kilos of starter at a time. Um, so it's our white flour, our starter, salt and water, that's it. So this is our Austin sourdough. And, uh, so what, uh, we have a question, what is the whole point of scoring when it comes to different uh, designs. Why why do you score differently? Is it just decorative or is there an actual reason for the bread? Well, it is functional. If you don't score at all, your loaf is going to probably find a weak spot to burst through. And so what scoring does is control the rise and the, the final rise in the oven. We call it oven spray. So when it first hits the heat of the oven, it expands greatly in that first uh, two, three, four minutes. And that's called oven spring. And that's what scoring does. It controls. You can see, like these two were exactly the same, but the score influences kind of the final shape. This has kept its narrow shape through there. Um, and this one, you can see it, it bulged out a little bit more and rolled up out of there. These are rolling nice here too. The other thing that influences your scoring is, of course, your shaping. If you don't have good, if you haven't developed good tension to your dough, um, then your scores aren't going to pop out like this as much. And that might be another uh, issue with the high hydration, especially if it's a no-need dough. You might be getting a little less opening of your scores because with the no-need dough, you're not shaping it as tightly as we do when we shape these loaves in the bakery. Um, it's kind of the whole point of the no-knead dough and then you use the Dutch oven to, to hold in the shape during the bake, but you don't develop that surface tension in quite the same way, so your scores aren't going to pop quite as much. So that easy sourdough recipe that's really a no-knead dough, it only has the one fold after the overnight rise, that one you might have a harder time getting a really distinctive open score. And again, it comes down to that plus the you know the shaping plus the proofing. All these little steps along the way they all add up to whether um, it comes out. We have one more question from Victoria. Does it help to have flour on the surface of the bread? I've been letting our bread rise in parchment-lined bread pans because I don't have proofing baskets. Then I score, put them in our hot Dutch oven, so mine never has flour on the top. The flour uh, does not help scoring at all. It, um, if you have too much flour, it's gonna hurt your crust. And of course, too much just flour on there isn't gonna taste really great either. Like this one even has a little more flour than like that, that I prefer, like these are really nice. So the flour just becomes a little bit decorative, but it does not influence the scoring at all. And in fact, too much flour will make, a, make your crust so it doesn't uh, get as nice and crispy and nice crust on there. It's actually an over-flouring of the loaves is a fault to make it. Great. Uh, David, can you tell us about the contest one more time? Yes. Don't forget we're going to have a sourdough naming contest. It's 
starting uh, starting today. Mm -hmm. And this Sunday, we're going to be selecting some finalists. So go on our, the uh, Facebook Breadwinner group, where you probably are right now. <laughs> and we're going to post about this contest. Um, send a, a photo or a video with you and your sourdough and, your, and the name of it. Tell us the name of it. We're, on Sunday, we're going to be selecting some finalists. And then on Monday, we'll put those finalists on Instagram, and y'all can help vote for your favorite. The prize for all the finalists is a copy of Bread on the Table, and the grand prize winner also gets a $150 gift certificate to Easy Tiger. A gift card that you can use in the drive-thru, you can uh, use for deliveries. All right. And thank you again. All of you have helped us out with our community challenge loads. Uh, the community loads have done just awesome, fantastic. We've already, uh, I think we're, if we're not there yet, we're this close to our 10,000 loaf goal. Uh, so we're super excited about that. And every day we're baking extra loads to give to those charities, Central Texas Food Bank and Meals on Wheels and Keep Austin Fed and a couple other groups. So. Uh, thank you all for your help and support on that. Uh, we're just so happy to be helping our community with some bread. Thank you very much and keep baking.